Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here with you in God's Word. Another day to rejoice and be glad in it. What is that it? God's presence, God's Word, uh, God's direction for us. Even when we don't think He's present, He is working. And that's what we're establishing within this uh, book, this narrative, this story of Esther. And so we're in Esther chapter 2, and as it, as, as it is a narrative, uh, just to remind you of the time frame, uh, people are back in Jerusalem, they've built the temple, they've kind of grown in faith and being able to worship there, um, and then we have this pocket of time where Esther takes place, um, and then we get to see Ezra and Nehemiah come back to uh, bring about the law of the Lord, uh, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. But this is back in Susa. This is back in Persia um, as it's happening over in Jerusalem. This is now in Persia in the uh, nation that is the power in the world at this time. King Xerxes, uh, just a rehash real quickly, um, he gets his way uh, and the reality of his way was his queen wasn't uh, heeding his commands and so he got rid of her. And so, he needs a new queen. Chapter 2 of Esther. Later, when the anger of King, Ar uh, King Xerxes had subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what he had decreed about her. Then the king's personal attendants proposed, Let a search be made for beautiful young virgins for the king. Let the king appoint commissioners in every province of his realm to bring all these beautiful girls into the harem at the citadel of Susa. Let them be placed under the care of Haggai, the king's eunuch, who is in charge of the women, and let beauty treatments be given to them. Then let the girl who pleases the king be queen instead of Vashti. This advice appealed to the king, and he followed it. Pretty surface level, if you ask me, right, of being able to say the queen just needs to be the most beautiful. Actually, they'll even beautify her to be able to bring her into this place. That's what they looked at back in that time, back in that culture of being able to say, the king needed to be the tallest and most handsome. The queen needed to be the most beautiful. They saw that stuff on the surface. Well, even that surface level, God uses. But he doesn't keep it at that surface. And this is what we get to see with Esther. Now, in verse 5, there was in the citadel of Susa a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin, named Mordecai, son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, who had been carried into exile from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, among those taken captive with Jehoiachin, king of Judah. Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, whom he had brought up because she had neither father nor mother. This girl was also known as Esther, was lovely in form and features, and Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother died. When the king's order and edict had been proclaimed, many girls were brought to the citadel of Susa and put under the care of Haggai. Esther also was taken to the king's palace and entrusted to Haggai, who had charge of the harem. The girl pleased him and won his favor. Immediately, he provided her with her beauty treatments and special food. He assigned to her seven maids, selected from the king's palace, and moved her and her maids into the best place in the harem. Esther had not revealed her nationality and family background because Mordecai had forbidden her to do so. Every day, he walked back and forth near the courtyard of the harem to find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. Before a girl's turn came to go, and into King Xerxes, she had to complete 12 months of beauty treatments prescribed for the women, six months with oil of myrrh and six with perfumes and cosmetics, and this is how she would go to the king. Anything she wanted was given her to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. In the evening, she would go there, and in the morning, return to another part of the harem to the care of Shashgaz, the king's eunuch who was in charge of the concubines. She would not return to the king unless he was pleased with her and summoned her by name. When the turn came for Esther, the girl Mordecai had adopted, the daughter of his uncle Abihail, to go to the king, she asked for nothing other than what Haggai, the king's eunuch, was in charge of the harem, suggested. And Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. She was taken to King Xerxes in the royal residence in the tenth month, the month of Tibeth, 
in the seventh year of his reign. So we're looking at 479 BC. Now the king was attracted to Esther more than to any of the other women, and she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. And the king gave a great banquet, Esther's banquet, for all his nobles and officials. He proclaimed a holiday throughout the provinces and distributed gifts with royal liberality. When the virgins were assembled a second time, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. But Esther had kept secret her family background and nationality, just as Mordecai had told her to do. For she continued to follow Mordecai's instructions as she had done when he was bringing her up. During the time Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, Bithana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, became angry and conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. But Mordecai found out about the plot and told Queen Esther, who in turn reported to the king, giving credit to Mordecai. And the report was investigated and found to be true. The two, offic two officials were hanged on a gallows. And all this was recorded in the book of the annals in the presence of the king. As you are going to find out through this narrative of Esther, people are in the right place at the right time. People are gifted with what they need to be gifted to for God to be able to walk forth in and amongst even the world power, Persia. Esther, who's from the tribe of Benjamin, a beautiful girl, and that's what it took to be able to actually step towards the king and step towards into being crowned queen, is now Queen Esther, and her person who raised her from long ago, God's provision again, was waiting outside because he was a guy he was a guy of protection. He was a guy of making sure that everything was okay and overheard these two guards. Right place, right time. For God to be able to bring about his plan. You're gonna see this unfold chapter by chapter. So far, a queen is gone, Esther is crowned. Esther has a family member who actually brings forth great news towards the king of an assassination and, not to steal thunder, but he will be appointed. He'll be appointed. Now, the tribe of Benjamin has infiltrated into the world power Persia for the purpose that God has in order. God puts people in the right place at the right time. And I pray that's true for you as well. I know it has been for me throughout my faith walk, throughout my life. People were in the right place at the right time, being able to give to me either the promises of God or the encouragement that's needed to be able to seek out what God is doing and how he's taking action in my life. And here's the almost amazing thing, I think. As we grow in faith, as we are the people of God, that person in the right place at the right time could be you today for another. So let's live our lives in faithfulness and love towards God and in faithfulness and love towards the people around us. Have a blessed day.